Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozuri, Evinrude, Lama Glass, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk, New York. Hey there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine with this week's web video fishing forecast for New England. Well, this week's video is a little bit different from what you've come to expect as I'm actually on vacation right now. So I shot the video before I left. So uh, as you watch this today, I'm up on the Cape working some of my old beaches, walking the same spots that I did 20 years ago, hunting bass, the likes of which you can find in the books by Frank Dania, which of course I brushed up upon before I went on vacation, as I always do when I head to the Cape. While the back beaches don't receive that same fishing pressure and coverage they once did, I can assure you the fishing is nothing short of excellent these days, despite having to run the gauntlet of seals and the occasional white shark from time to time. So what I did in preparing this week's video was I went back to last year's video for this same week and not surprisingly so, it's pretty similar to what we've got going on today. First up, there's a ton of small bait fish along the coast. This is attracting the usual suspects, small striped bass and bluefish, but we're also starting to see an increase in those summer speedsters I've been telling you about the last couple of weeks, like bonita, chub mackerel, um, still waiting on that first confirmed false albacore. Uh, last week, last year, excuse me, on this very week, we also had the first good shot of king mackerel on the Cape. So of course, while I'm up there this week, I'll be sure to be on the lookout for any signs of them and I'll let you know next week when I come back, normal video, if I got into them and let you know how I did. With that, this is also a good opportunity to look back at last year's August monthly issue, which covered not only proper ID of false albacore, Spanish mackerel, and bonita, but also gave some tips on how to catch them, where to target them, and so on. Remember, with a paid subscription on the Fisherman Magazine, you get digital access to all three editions. That's New England, Long Island, and New Jersey, as well as access to our digital archive. So subscribers can go check that out right now at no extra charge at thefisherman.com. <clears throat> See, moving along bottom fishing is in that summertime transition to deeper water. I know I've been saying that every week, but it just keeps going deeper as those inshore waters are warming and warming. Fluke fishing has been tough all season, uh, pretty much everywhere, not just here in New England, but now you're really going to have to go deep into those 100 plus foot spots uh, to score your doormats. Black sea bass can be found from about 80 to that 120 foot depth or so. Uh, speaking of those deep water sea bass, Jeffrey Downs got into a good bite fishing in Long Island Sound heading into this past weekend. So it just goes to show there's still some big sea bass inside the sound. They haven't all vacated those waters. And keep in mind, August has two Dreamboat Fishing Challenge Fish of the Month species. We've got Mahi Mahi, for those of you heading offshore a little bit, and Black Sea Bass, for those of you that stay on the inshore grounds. As always, be sure to visit thefisherman.com for complete details on the Dreamboat Fishing Challenge, as well as up to the minute updates on that leaderboard. I can say that it is getting good, so go check it out. Another thing this time of the year, it's a great time to try some freshwater fishing. Now I used to do a lot of freshwater fishing on the Connecticut River when I lived in Western Massachusetts when I was much younger, as well as eventually when I moved down into Connecticut. Uh, I used to get into the likes of bass, carp, catfish, pike. The list just goes on and on as there's a lot of options on the Connecticut River. But that's not the only option freshwater side right now. Longtime Fisherman Magazine subscriber Mark Zabawa sent me an email this week. He was passing along, uh, passing along a photo, excuse me, one of his coworkers, Linda DiCrescenzo, was recently fishing at Candlewood Lake when she caught and released a really big carp. Now that's a great summertime location. She said she had a, gr a big crowd of kids cheering her on as she battled the fish so congrats on the awesome catch and then last up <clears throat> tim moore from tim moore outdoors sent me an email just before i left he wants to say he's hearing of some really big striped bass heading towards his area of coastal new hampshire as the inshore waters clean up from the big tides that they saw last week so until he gets word that they arrive he's been hitting lake winnipesaukee with some the salmon fishing still pretty much the same as it was last week he did note the only addition is that Wonder Bread colored spoons are beginning to catch a good mix of salmon and rainbow trout in the lake. Lake trout fishing is also really heating up and he landed his personal best Winnipesaukee Laker last week which measured an impressive 29 inches. That's an awesome fish. And uh, he said the nervous minnow is still his lure of choice producing those big Lakers. He went on to say this smallmouth bass are right where he would expect them to be at this time of the year with the warming waters. They start off shallow right at first light, but they move out deeper in 30 to 50 foot depths as the sun comes up. And he said that a watermelon Yamamoto H grub 
on a quarter ounce jig head has been getting it done for him. All right, well, there you have it. I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine, wishing you tight lines if you head out onto the water this weekend. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evan Rood Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dream Boat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.